Hi, good evening. It's uh, Thinking Slow. Um, I'm going to do a quick video here about this uh, antibody disease enhancement. So um, a paper came out quite recently, which you can see here on the 9th of August uh, 2021, talking about disease enhancement. And there's not uh, particularly big news in this because this is a sort of well-established and known issue for vaccines, but it's kind of surprising that um, it has been published because this question has been sort of taboo uh, and more or less nobody has mentioned it anywhere in mainstream media or the government for a, a long time now. So the timing is quite surprising and I thought it's worth bringing um, your attention to the paper. Basically what the paper says is that um, uh, you, you develop a vaccine based on the wild type which is the first type of virus that you see and uh, the vaccines we have now will be developed around the Wuhan uh, version of the virus, which was this D614G. Uh, um, and then what happens is uh, after a year or so, when there's another wave of the uh, virus, um, then you could possibly get a different reaction uh, from the vaccine. So. The vaccines develop for one type strain of the virus and then when it comes into contact with a new strain of the virus the the reaction is somewhat unpredictable and uh, this paper actually goes through the two sort of conflicting processes one of which is the facilitating antibodies and the neutralizing antibodies and they've essentially concluded that when uh, vaccinated people are coming into contact with a delta strain uh, the the impact from the facilitating antibodies is likely to be greater than from the neutralizing antibodies and uh, this is something to look into basically now that's not in any way a surprise to anyone that's read anything about vaccine development uh, even as a non-medic uh, you can read this paper here which traces through uh, vaccine development programs for uh, SARS-CoV-1 uh, vaccines. And you can see 11 development programs, all of which ended up with uh, disease enhancement. Uh, so it's, it's not surprising that this is, not only is it a possibility, but it's actually a probability with a fairly high chance of occurring. And that's what we discussed with Professor Bakhti as well. He he also confirmed, you know, it's it's not a good picture in terms of disease enhancement, given the very limited uh, trial data that there is. And just a reminder that it was only two months from the end of the second dose to the emergency use authorization. So very little data indeed. And this process, disease enhancement, actually needs essentially a whole year before you know, you know, is it going to happen or isn't it? And again, based on prior experience, there's a high probability that it, that it could happen or will happen. Um, and then just wrapping up this um, uh, short film is basically what we're seeing in terms of hospital numbers now um, in, in, in many countries, actually, in terms of um, hospital numbers and intensive care, this uh, numbers you're seeing much higher numbers in summer of 2021 than you saw in 2020 um, without vaccines. So both periods, 2020 and 2021, the summer is the low point, but you can compare sort of day for day, which is what I've done here. So you can see June and July, the number of people with mechanical ventilation in 2020 now is many fold higher uh, in 2021 than it was in 2020. So 2020 is the dotted line going down, 2021 is the blue line going up. And that pattern has been repeated uh, in different countries, including in Canada, which is something we looked at recently. So anyway, just wrapping up this uh, <clears throat> very short video, you know, there is this paper that's been published uh, in August just now on uh, disease enhancement, which has been a taboo subject for the last year and a half. So it's kind of surprising uh, that it's that it's come out now, but it's out. And again, it confirms what you've seen in historic vaccine development programs, which was in that second paper that I showed you. Now, I don't know, I'm not a virologist, I'm not a medic, but what I can say for sure 
is that we have many more people uh, on mechanical ventilation in a lot of countries than we had in 2020 without the vaccine, um, you know, four to five times more now. Is that evidence? Isn't it evidence? I don't know, but I have to say it's very unusual and it's very unusual from a historic perspective as well. So, um, you know, have a look, have a think. The data's there, the links to the papers are there. And as I keep, <clears throat> keep saying in all of these presentations, the key thing is to stay free and not to stay safe because without freedom, uh, you don't have safety. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.